back here at the NRA National Firearms Museum in the new Peterson Gallery. I'm here with my good friend Phil Schreier, senior curator of the National Firearms Museum. And Phil, before we get to the case for standing, this one caught my eye as soon as I came in the Peterson Gallery. I want to talk about it, but first, give us a quick, not not as 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 detailed as the tour you gave us earlier this month, but tell us a little bit about the flavor of the Peterson Gallery here. Well, as you can see, John, this looks a lot different than the uh, the other end of the gallery. Uh, this is a, uh, this part of the gallery is meant to be uh, reflective of Mr. Peterson's uh, style and taste, and, and specifically his home in Beverly Hills. Uh, we actually kind of recreated a small corner of his living room here uh, in a small fashion. Uh, with uh, uh, pieces of art, bronze that, that he had in his home and in his office. And then uh, hanging on the wall, uh, one of the most spectacular uh, uh, gun boards uh, that was yeah. created. And, and that's the neat part about this collection. It's the fantastic firearms, priceless firearms, but also the great things like this. There's displays all over the place, ammunition and different things like that. And, and this one, like I said, caught my eye. Tell us about this gun board. Well, this is a, a real unique piece of not only firearms history, but American history. You know, in 1876, the United States held their centennial exhibition. You know, world's fairs and exhibitions had only been around since the late 1840s, 1850s. So that when 1876 rolled around, the United States rolled out all the stops to put on a tremendous exhibit in Philadelphia, highlighting our first hundred years. And most of the world wouldn't have given us 10 years, you know, back in uh, 1781 right, when the yeah. revolution ended. And there we were. And, uh, and here we are 100 years later, and the, uh, the captains of industry, literally. I mean, it was the American industrial complex that brought America into the, uh, uh, the prom prominence of, of a world power following our Civil War years. And, and that was due largely in part to wonderful little companies such as Harrington and Richardson of Worcester, Mass., uh, who were engaged in the firearms trade it, because it was the development and the eventual manufacturing of firearms that led to the American method of manufacturing, right. making things of interchangeable parts. And as far as World's Fairs go, Colt in 1851 at the great uh, Crystal Palace in London uh, was able to demonstrate this innovation in manufacturing. Uh, so by 1876, uh, the gun makers uh, were all uh, coming to uh, Philadelphia to display uh, their very best uh, works of art. And Harrington and Richardson, which, you know, a lot of people today, you know, they, they give them short shrift as collecting guns. Right. Because they did make a number of, uh, of shall we say, very economically, uh, uh, you know, available guns right. to the common masses. Uh, and generally five, you know, shot revolvers. Uh, but here you see uh, the, the vastness of, of their product line and how they were able to actually uh, embellish and, and uh, heighten the value uh, of the guns and really make them true collectibles. Uh, you've got some beautiful engravings, uh, and there's a, a wonderful full figure engraved on, on ivory, uh, engravings on uh, Mother of Pearl. Uh, you've got fantastic rosewood, walnut. Uh, the guns are all, uh, all uh, nickel plated, some washed in gold. This, this has gold wash on it. Uh, some full coverage engraving, some uh, just a, a little uh, bit of engraving to them. Uh, and it's called the pinwheel board because the guns actually uh, rotated in a track. You know, it was pretty interesting. How and cool I'm is that? Not sure exactly <laughs> where the rest of the apparatus that kept them from knocking into each other is. Uh, you, and you can see markings on the felt here where, where they, they did rotate. Yeah, you can see the tracks in the felt. That's and that's something else, the fact that this is still in its original condition from 1876. Amazing. And it came with the two medals that it won. It won a, a bronze and a silver medal uh, at the exhibition. Uh, and uh, this is actually the second time this has been here. Uh, because back in the... Uh, Late eight, 1980s and early uh, 1990s, Mr. Peterson got into collecting real nice antique guns. 
Uh, his cult collection is still marveled at today. The, uh, Absolutely. Uh, the, the beauty of, of his antique uh, and rarity of his cults. And this uh, gun board uh, was a part of that collection and was brought out here and was displayed in the old museum downtown for a while and then was brought here to uh, Fairfax and displayed when we didn't have a National Firearms Museum open to the public. Uh, but that's one of the great things about the legacy of Bob Peterson is he was such a great and generous guy when there was no National Firearms Museum in Fairfax and it was in a developing plan. It took four years to open that museum once we moved here. It was the Robert E. Peterson Antique Colt uh, and, 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 and Significant Gun Collection which included this that was on display in the building. Wow, how great is that? Now it's found its way back here. It's wonderful, and thanks for sharing with us. How can folks get more information on this particular display on the Peterson Gallery and on the National Farms Museum? Well, they hope that we'll, they'll come by and visit us in person. And, and for that, we have plenty of ample parking. We're located right off of Interstate 66 in Fairfax, Virginia, open from 9.30 to 5, seven days a week. Uh, but if uh, Fairfax is out of your... Uh, uh, you know, day tripping range. Uh, you're welcome to join us on the web at uh, nramuseum.com and see all these wonderful pieces up close. Because awesome. uh, we've just completed a, a project where every single firearm in the museum has been photographed uh, multiple times from multiple angles. And uh, you can enlarge those that are in high res and get real real tight on the engraving. In fact, uh, I'm amazed I got online the other night at home just to see if my computer at home was capable of <laughs> uploading the site. And, uh, you know, I was, I've been with some of these guns 21 years, uh, but when I was able to pull them up as a photograph and open that file uh, and enlarge it, I was seeing some things for the first time. Wow. Uh, it was really amazing. Fantastic. So, uh, the, uh, you know, it's like you're at a, a professional sporting, you know, game, or you're watching the game of the jumbotron. Right. You know, and in this case, you know, the the, the pictures are better than real life in some cases. The Farms Museum in HD. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, and Phil, it is. thank you so much for for sharing more of the Peterson Gallery and the National Farms Museum with us here on the Curator's Corner. Thank you, sir. Thank you.